Welcome back. The South African Hindu Mahasabha was established on the 31st of May 1912 as a national body representing the cultural and religious aspirations of South Africa's Hindu community. It took the responsibility of promoting religious education in schools and preserving the sanctity of Hinduism. 105 years later, the Sabha is still in existence with Mr. Ashwin Trikamji as its long-standing president. Namaste, Panditji. It's wonderful yeah. to have Namaste you join us. to you as well. 105 years the Hindu yeah. Mahasabha has been in existence. Mm. That is a very long time. The, the Hindu Mahasabha, yes, it's been around. It's, uh, it's had its, uh, as they call it, ups and downs. But uh, right now, yeah, it's, 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 it's still surviving doing extremely well and uh, succeeding in its objective of uniting all Hindus in South Africa. I think that's very, very important, you know. So 105 years ago when it was first established, was that the primary objective at the time? Yes, what happened is that uh, during that time, you know, this was now, if you just roll back 1860, our forefathers all arrived here uh, as endangered laborers, uh, working and exploited in the sugar cane fields and so on. But they came here with their cultural heritage and their religious practices. And they didn't give up, give up that. So they were all in, I wouldn't call it splinter groups, but in little pockets. Uh, there were no organizations. Uh, they were in little homes and families and groups of families and so on. And then that eventually resulted in them forming themselves into larger groups. And the larger groups effectively became so-called organizations. And then uh, in 1912, uh, when Sh Swami Shankaranjaji came down to South Africa as a guest of the Arya Samaj, uh, he discovered that there was a need for a unified body. And uh, he then effectively created the platform for the formation of the South African Hindu Mahasabha. So 105 years on, what has changed in terms of what the Hindu Mahasabha tries to achieve in, in its objectives? Well, if you think about 1912, then it was just a body trying to get everybody together, uh, each one uh, continuing on its own. And I think that's one of the essential uh, reasons why the Sabha has been successful. The Sabha is a federal body the organizations which are affiliated to the Sabha are, are still continuing and allowed to continue in their independent ways. Mm -hmm. The Mahasabha doesn't interfere with that, but they give representation on issues that concern mm -hmm. the community at large. So that's basically what it is. But then, if you go back to 1912, the Hindu organizations were essentially uh, practicing their rituals and their cultural habits, I'd call them, and the different customs that, you know, depending on which part of India they came from. And that was what it was all about then. The Hindu Mahasabha was a, was a watchdog looking after all those needs and so on. The rituals were very good when we first came here because rituals kept the Hindu community together and more importantly had them practicing custom. Mm. And that's why Hinduism was sustained in this country. But now we're moving on. We're reaching a point now where people understand. They don't understand ritual. They don't want to understand. They want real philosophy. How, how am I going to be practicing Hinduism so that it, it helps me to improve my life? So it's no secret that South Africa has a very thriving Hindu community. Um, and we have, obviously, our ancestors brought it with them when they came to the country. And it has sort of sustained now and endured for more than 150 years. Yeah. And it continues today. Obviously, it evolves as well. Yeah. What do you attribute its almost, I don't want to use the term success, but its sustainability? What do you attribute it to? Uh, if you take 12 months of the year, there is always some important festival. We call it festival, but it's an observation. Mm -hmm which has a philosophical meaning and a, just a practical meaning. And that keeps Hinduism alive because for 12 months, every month, I mean, I'll take the most common example, uh, Ekadashi. Mm. You know, it's the 11th day of the first half of the year, uh, of the month, and you get the 11th day of the second half of the month. And uh, almost all Hindus 
have a special relationship with Ekadashi. That relationship was forged by our forefathers because they considered it to be an absolute that you fasted on that day. Right. And today, that is being carried forward. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio today and for sharing that insight with us. It's really been uh, wonderful having you here and joining us. And uh, we certainly hope we'll have you back sometime soon. Oh, thank you very much. So up next, Anuradha shares her secret to a delectable eggless chocolate brownie.